Great. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Nigel Topping. Uh, I was the UN Climate Change High Level Champion for COP26. And it's a pleasure to welcome you all here as your moderator um, and to welcome you to a very practical conversation um, in a COP which is becoming increasingly practical, talking about real deployment targets and real money and real collaboration, both public and private. Um, and I think actually as, as a symbol of that picking up of the pace, one of the things you're going to hear about is um, Lead IT 2.0. Lead IT was only formed four years ago and has already achieved its original mission, so has had to come up with a second mission. So we're going to hear more about that. Um, and in particular, um, the Industrial Transition Partnership um, between Sweden and, and India. Um, and just, just one thought, this Lead IT collaboration led by um, Sweden and India has really pioneered a new form of industrial international collaboration in Glasgow. We had the launch of the Breakthrough Agenda and now um, we'll hear more about, about mission innovation. So that all of these um, international industrial collaborations which are identifying the challenges to just and equitable industrial transitions and then working together um, to remove um, the problems is a really exciting development in the overall choreography of the COP. And that, that means sharing pathways, figuring out how to mobilize finance, public, private, uh, domestic, um, and international, and in particularly focusing on the, both the local and the international just and equitable element. Local, of course, in terms of communities who maybe have to transition the nature of employment, but internationally to make sure that um, technology sharing is accelerated so that the best technology is the cheapest technology everywhere in the world as quickly as possible. Um, uh, it's, it's my great pleasure um, to introduce um, uh, some introductory remarks from the, the ministers who've very kindly agreed to join us at a very important and very busy time in the negotiations. So without further ado, I'd first of all like to invite Minister Romina Pormokrati to the Minister for Climate and the Environment in Sweden to make some opening remarks. Minister, over to you. Minister Yadav, Excellencies, dear friends. I don't need to tell this audience about the urgency to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and that we are off track to reach the agreed goals in our Paris Agreement. I think you are also aware of the opportunities that come of decarbonization and green transition. It holds possibilities for regional development, new jobs, investments in new technology, increased efficiency, and improved competitiveness. Industrial development, it is vital for the social and economic prosperity of all countries. Yet the lack of commercially viable low carbon technologies amongst other challenges and the long investment cycles in industrial sectors risk locking in carbon emissions for decades. It is therefore essential to foster partnerships between uh, major industry transition frontrunners and ambitious economies that wish to align their industrial development with goals of Paris Agreement for economic prosperity. It is also in this context that Lead It continues to be an important convener for governments and companies who want to lead the way. Lead It has been successful in uh, raising the profile of the necessity of action in sectors such as steel and cement. We have shared lessons and experience that contributes to fostering partnerships, sharing information, and increasing transparency through the example of the green steel and the cement trackers. <coughs> the transition journey to green steel that has taken place in Sweden clearly shows that a success factor in new business models is close collaboration in the whole value chain from raw materials to the design of the final product. Earlier this week, Honorable uh, Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson and Honorable Prime Minister uh, Narenda Modi together launched Lead It 2.0 and a new deepened cooperation between India and Sweden through the establishment of an industry transition platform. To achieve a system change, we need rapid and scaled up actions. We need to strengthen relevant institutions and policy frameworks and work together around co-development of technology. Collaboration on research, on innovation, and on mobilizing investments, it's also a key. 
And therefore, India and Sweden has uh, selected these areas to be at the core of the industry transition platform established here at the COP28. However, this is not only a partnership between India and Sweden. It is an opportunity, an opportunity through coordinated effort to strengthen bilateral and multilateral efforts to uh, support heavy industry reaching net zero by mid-century, which is essential for our economies to keep prospering, for these industries and sectors to be relevant in the fossil-free future we are headed towards. So I invite you all today to uh, contribute. We will take uh, stock of the implementation of the platform at COP29 and COP30. And we count on all of you that are present here today to continue to contribute to its success moving forward for prosper economies for both India, Sweden and our, our sectors, as well as uh, living up to the Paris Agreement. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister. Um, it brings great joy to my heart to hear you talk about systems change and the pace um, and, and the collaboration. Um, and now to hear the, the Indian perspective, it's my pleasure to welcome His Excellency Bupenda Yadav, the Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Labour and Employment from India. Minister. Thank you, Minister Romana Parmukhtari. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you at the, this discussion on partnership for just an equitable industry transition. I am glad to share that uh, leadership group of industry transition has entered into its second phase with the launch of Lead IT 2.0 by Sri Narendra Modi, Honorable Prime Minister of India, and Mr. Wolf. Kerestersen, Honorable Prime Minister of Sweden, on 1st December 2023. Thereafter, at the LEAD Summit yesterday, the members reinforced their commitment to the vision and mission of the LEAD IT through the mission statement. During the last couple of years, marking the first phase of LEAD IT, that is from 2019 to 2023, we have observed a significant shift in the global industrial landscape as industry transition climbs higher on international agenda. However, the real transition challenges of technology transfer and finance are yet to be addressed. Collaborative international mechanisms need to ensure that barriers such as intellectual property rights are addressed to facilitate technology transfer from developed to developing countries. The LED IT 2.0 will focus on supporting low carbon transition on the ground through a structured framework and a three pillars. First, global forum for dialogue. Second, technology transfer and co-development. And third, an industry transitions platform. Through these pillars, the member will continue to support, engage, in promote industry transition. India and Sweden have had long-standing relations based on common values, strong business, investment and research, and development linkages and similar approaches to meet global challenges of peace and security and development. We also shared commitment to innovation, sustainability, and inclusive growth. This bond has been further strengthened through the launch of industry transition platform under LEAD IT 2.0 by our leaders. The India-Sweden Joint Declaration on Industry Transition Platform is not merely a partnership between two nations. It is an alliance for a sustainable future. It is, an, it is a testament to our collective resolve to address the climate crisis and shape a world where industries thrive harmoniously with the environment. The India-Sweden ITP has been conceived with the objective of strengthening institutional framework, unlocking conditions for technology demonstration projects, fostering innovation, research and development, and capacity building and mobilization of finance and investments. It will catalyze collaboration, foster knowledge exchange, facilitate technology transfer, 
and promote joint research and development endeavors tailored to support India's specific need in achieving a low-carbon industrial transition. It will promote innovation, empowering Indian and Swedish industries to adopt cutting-edge solutions and implement sustainable practice that boost productivity, minimize environmental impact, and generate new economic opportunities. We envisage a remarkable partnership to accelerate the transition of industries toward a low-carbon, resource-efficient, and circular economy made. The India-Sweden ITP shall be operationalized through an industry transition action plan for the period of 2024-2026 that will be developed in consultation with key stakeholders of the targeted hard to orbit sectors. Friends, let us work together to harness the power of innovation, collaboration, and technology to shape an industry of the future, an industry that is sustainable, resilient, and inclusive, driving prosperity for generations to come. Before I conclude, I would like to express my gratitude to the government of Sweden, uh, especially through the Minister Romana and the lead IT Secretariat for their steadfast commitment to accelerating industry transition to low-carbon pathways. As we embark on this transformative journey, I would like to call upon all stakeholders to join forces and contribute through their expertise and resource to the platform. Thank you very much. Um, th thank you very much, Minister. I, I know um, the ministers need to leave now, and I think it, I really want to thank you for, I mean, this very direct evidence of your personal leadership and commitment, the fact that in such a crucial time of the negotiations, which you're so close involved in, you've, you, you've taken the time out to be with us. So I think um, I'll just ask everyone to put their hands together to thank the, the two ministers for their leadership whilst they leave the room. Okay, so this kind of collaboration needs the strong top-down leadership from the heads of state in the agreement and from the ministers, um, but it also has to be implemented in the details, and we're going to hear a lot more about the collaboration now from um, a, a, a great panel. Um, I was going to ask the panel to sit up here whilst we show a video, but I noticed the chairs are in front of the screen, so I think we'll watch the video first and then ask you to come up. Um, so um, this... Um, Lead IT 2.0 mission has just been agreed in the last few days. And just as a, again, as an indication of the pace and the collaboration, we're going to see um, a video that's been put together quite quickly featuring um, Dalmia Cement, obviously big and very um, innovative um, uh, Indian cement company, and, and Sultex, um, an innovative Swedish technology company. So um, just join me in, in watching the video, and then we'll invite the panel up to the stage. Soltex is a Swedish green tech company that developed an innovation for electrification and carbon separation, which can be used in emission-free cement production and quicklime production. Last month, we had the inauguration of our research center in Hufors under the Industrial LIPI program. And now I'm at Dalmia's headquarter in Delhi and later on this week at the potential site where we will, we will build our first pilot, a project that will explore and test the poss possibility to produce emission-free cement together with Dalmia. Dalmia Cement is one of the lowest carbon footprint cement company in the global cement world and working towards sustainability and profitability together with our philosophy of green and green is profitable and sustainable. Now, we are embarking on how we can avoid 100% fossil fuel by various other means. One of the projects which we have taken up is the Swedish company Saltex, which will help us in exploring possibilities of replacing fossil fuel by electricity, and that electricity would also be renewable electricity. This will go a long way for decarbonization, not only of 
डालते हैं सीमेंट और सीमेंट सेक्टर बट इंडस्ट्री एज ए होल Great, thank you. Very quickly put together, but a really good practical example of collaboration between two um, industrial entities solving a very real problem between India, in, India and Sweden. Um, let me let me ask the panelists um, to come up, and I have Rishika Dral, the Deputy Secretary um, of the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change in the Government of India. Um, thank you, um, Robert Andren, the Director General of the Swedish Energy Agency. Uh, Elfrida Anna uh, Moore, the Head of the Department of International Climate, Environment, and Energy. at the Austrian Ministry of Climate Action and um, Mathilde Maynard the Deputy Director for the Environment Directorate and OECD Coordinator for Climate and Green Finance please join me on the stage thank you let me come round so i can see you all look you all in the eye so um Rishika, let, me, let, let, let me start with you um you know the the the, the this India Sweden industry transition partnership although I, i hear you calling it platform as well um uh, has been launched here we've just heard by india and sweden just a few days ago um could you um tell us how you think that strengthened um industrial transition partnerships like this one can help accelerate the um the the, the industrial transition in in india and and globally particularly this issue of trying to make sure we don't have a, a sort of the developed world makes the transition now and then everybody else goes 20 years later how do we make sure there's a global equity element to this uh thank you nigel uh, for that question and i think uh, this can be a good start and uh, uh, before i uh, jump into uh, the india sweden partnership i would uh, you know like to give a brief uh, you know speak briefly about the india sweden relationships and our ministers have already highlighted the long standard partnerships that india and sweden have had in various areas which includes uh, technology and innovation and uh, yesterday at the leaded summit uh, minister from sweden ms uh, parmukteri had also highlighted uh, one of the approaches that uh, uh, the government of uh, sweden follows is the whole of government approach so i would say that there are huge commonalities between in india and sweden and uh, we can be a very uh, you know productive and effective partners in uh, the transition of the industrial sector and uh, we really look forward to a very p- uh, positive and meaningful cooperation through this industry transition platform and uh, uh, lead it as you already know that um, it has been active for last 4 uh, years and it has been uh, able to raise the profile of the uh, of the industry transition need at the international platform and uh, you know uh, uh, now when we are completing the first phase of lead it uh, all of us including uh, the members of lead it has a realization that uh, lead it needs to be further strengthened and uh, empowered to be able to support the transitions on the ground which uh, with this uh, you know a thought in the mind and uh, feedback from various stakeholders during the last couple of one year uh, we have conceived leader 2.0 in a slightly different manner which includes three pillars where uh, leader will continue to do what it has been doing in last four years however there will be a added uh, priority with respect to industry transition platforms going forward and uh, to be able to demonstrate how these itps can be effective and uh, you know can be developed uh, there are two itps that uh, leaded secretariat has supported and uh, are you know uh, you know launched which is uh, india and sweden to mention the first one and then there is parallelly another itp being developed between uk and brazil so uh, these are the two pilot itps that uh, we are going to work on going forward just to demonstrate uh, how these uh, itps can be effective in the transition and uh, we will look forward to many more of these and uh, 
even though it is called a bilateral ITP within a northern and a southern country, however, it will not be limited to these two players. It is, a, it is going to be a multilateral platform where different uh, stakeholders that can contribute to the transition can actually play a role. So it is going to be a platform where uh, uh, innovators, financiers, technology providers, industry, and of course the governments can get together and work on a very specific and focused project area. So uh, that is our, uh, you know, uh, way forward for Leader 2.0. Talking about India, I would say that um, uh, uh, you know, 70% uh, of the built environment in India is going to come up in, you know, next couple of years till 2030. So uh, with this number, we can imagine the amount of demand for the cement and steel that is going to come up in the country. So, uh, you know, it is a very pertinent moment to start these transitions so that whatever is built in next next decade is actually sustainable, resilient, and also, you know, uh, with inputs from the green products. So it is a very opportune time for this partnership. And uh, India is going to have uh, humongous demand from the hard to abate sectors. And uh, if we can, you know, um, leverage this platform and the partnership to be able to come up with technologies which are, uh, you know, still at the nascent stage uh, through co-development, joint research. Uh, there cannot be, uh, you know, anything better than that. So we are very hopeful of this transition. And from the video, you can see that uh, the industry is already very excited about it. And they have already started to engage with each other on how they can collaborate. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, on this platform, I would just uh, request all the stakeholders, specifically the financing agencies, which have appetite for the investment in the the industrial space to uh, come forward and uh, evaluate if uh, you know they can be supportive of the transition platform in any of the ways so i'll stop here and uh, probably come back uh, with more uh, on this thank you well, very much let, let me just have a follow up on the finance point because i think um we've, we've seen a big opening up of the conversation around finance there's, there's of course the negotiated elements of finance which have their own dynamic and issues but there's, there's a much bigger picture. You know, um, Nick Stern, Vera Songwei, and Amar Bhattacharya published the second version of their paper, which we commissioned last year, which lays out very clearly the total amount of finance needed in emerging markets. And in particular, that, that yes, we need the MDBs to play a bigger role, but that we also need domestic finance to be mobilized. And India's got deep domestic capital markets. Um, and, and also private finance. I wonder if you could say anything about how you're thinking of mobilizing the whole of the finance ecosystem, not just the MDBs um, as part of the collaboration around the finance element. Absolutely, Nigel, I would say that uh, you are absolutely right there. Uh, the amount of financing required for the transitions as a whole for the climate action is running into trillions of uh, US dollars. So no one source of finance can actually be sufficient to be able to meet those level of requirements. So we need to pool in finances from all possible sources available. And uh, India uh, domestically has been using uh, its, uh, you know, government financing and uh, through the, you know, government budget to be able to leverage and attract more private investments into the priority sectors. And uh, under this uh, ITP also, we look forward to, you know, uh, following that uh, same approach. And uh, we, uh, we uh, will try to pool in resources from all possible sources because the investments required in the industrial space are actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, on the higher side as compared to the other sectors of the economy. So we need to pool in from wherever possible and we are open to uh, all sources, including MDBs, the bilateral development, uh, uh, cooperations, assistances, government financing, and also encouraging private financing into the space. So it has to be from all the sources. Right. Thank you. I, I must say, I think the, the India has been one of the one of the real pioneers in using the power of public public procurement to really drive volumes up and costs down in several technology areas. Um, let me let me turn now to, to, to Robert, Robert Andren, the Director General of the Swedish Energy Agency. 
Um, Robert, I know that the, the, the agency has a has responsibility for this kind of international collaboration. Perhaps you could just say something about how you see the agency playing a role um, in the ITP. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you for a very uh, inspiring description of what you are doing in India. And we have been in cl close collaboration with India since 2009, actually, in various projects. One of those are the one we saw just on the screen before the panel. Uh, and um, we are working in various areas of the whole of the energy system where there is a demand also from the local communities in India, for instance. What are the challenges? So we are there, we're trying to find the private actors that can go in and with solutions, new solutions that of course then are energy efficient or, or fossil free at best at least. Uh, and um, we worked with waste to energy, uh, we worked with the uh, grid, the microgrids and smart grids, which are an important part of electrifying uh, parts of India that lack electrification today, which is a question of a just transition in a way. <laughs> and um, but I'm a, I'm a big fan, and the agency is a big fan of actually being concrete, having concrete action on the ground, concrete projects that will result in something that we then can scale up, hopefully, where private actors can go in with private money and make a difference on a larger scale. Uh, so um, that's what we are doing. Uh, th that is one part. That is also in in includes, of course, market introduction of Swedish innovative companies. India is a huge market. Um, we also have then the work with the, uh, um, uh, Article 6 and the climate mm. uh, uh, collaboration under the Paris Agreement. So those two kind of venues, export promotion and the work we need to do under the Paris Agreement must go hand in hand. And I think, think that we are working hard to do that and making development perspectives and company perspectives go hand in hand. Yeah, this seems to be um, quite an important shift in the narrative to be talking about climate action as, de as development action rather than rather than start, especially in emerging markets, rather than talking about decarbonizing ca rapidly growing economies with bi big material and, and energy needs. But, um, you know, there's some, Sweden's done some very innovative things. I'm thinking of um, like the, the, the whole way that H2 Green Steel has been financed, for example, which is very complex but very innovative. I wonder if you could just say something about any of the concrete examples of either technology transfer or, or, or kind of finance structure, because it's not just it's not just physical technology, it seems to me, it's also like business model as a technology or finance. You can say something about concrete examples that you see of that transfer of expertise and technology so that all parts of the world can start to converge on the pace at which they transition. Yeah, and uh, I think that what we are trying to do as well, I just have to add that, is, is look at the whole value chain. So fossil-free steel, that's yeah, very important, but then we have to have fossil-free underground mining. So what we are doing in, in Sweden is trying to get those huge projects going on at the same time so that you have the whole value chain being fossil-free and sustainable and efficient. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, technology transfer and innovation, I think that what we are doing now in Sweden is that the, the public agencies uh, working in the innovation area, that is us, that is our agency for innovations, Finova, that has also concrete uh, programs in, with India, that we are trying to join hands here in Sweden, and also with our development agency, and then have these packages, these programs, in, including then these innovative companies, um, and the matchmaking with the actors in India, that then you transfer knowledge but you don't have to be there as an agency all the time because the actors themselves then find each other. So matchmaking is a very important part of our work when it comes then to find these key players to find each other. Yeah. And that is the, the concrete thing we have is a India, Sweden uh, uh, Innovators Accelerator, which is a, a clear hub for innovation where we do get actors to meet and make a difference. It's, it's interesting, when, um, one thing which Mahmoud Mohidin and I, the, the Egyptian champion and I got frustrated by last year was often hearing capital providers saying, we've got lots of money, there's no projects, and, and then project developers saying, we've got great projects, but there's no money. And we realised that in that context of connecting projects and money, but you're also talking about connecting people in the, in the value chain, that often the matchmaking um, infrastructure 
is not is not mature. So it's a really, I mean, as you, as you, once you put Dalmia and Soltex together, you, you can you can run away, right? Because they're going to make magic happen. But I think that that point about develop creating that kind of market infrastructure for people to find each other is really important. Because you create a business chain and business models, and then others act to see that there is profitability in this. Yeah. So uh, that's right. That's key. Thank you, Rob. Let, let me talk, turn now to Elfrida Anna from the the, the um, Austrian Ministry of Climate Change. Um, Elfrida, as I said in the beginning, we're, we're, we're starting to see a kind of, in some ways, a more complex ecosystem of international collaboration. That, that's not a bad thing because it means lots of people are working in different ways. So you're you're um, co-leading on mission innovation. Can you tell us a little bit about, about how the way the work of mission innovation nests in this context of, um, of, of these industrial transition platforms and the LEAD IT 2.0? Happy to, <clears throat> happy to do that, and thank you very much for the invitation to the Swedish Pavilion here uh, today. So I think it goes without saying that decarbonization um, and sustainable transformation are key to, to keep the 1.5 alive. And decarbonization of the industry uh, is, is a key element of it. And initiatives like Lead IT, but also Mission Innovation and the newly launched a Climate Cup Club of the G20. They are very good platforms for, um, for fostering uh, cooperation at the global level. As Austria, we are, we are supporting, as you already said, Mission Innovation, uh, and we are working closely there with Australia, but also other countries, um, to catalyze the development and demonstration of cost-competitive solutions. Mm. Um, for the efficient decarbonization of hard to abate sectors. Um, and it is, in, from, from our point of view, very important to foster uh, joint research on, uh, and also development and demonstration, which then leads to bringing down the costs and accelerating also the deployment. So we need to, to be agile, innovate, but then also to roll out uh, action on the ground at the same time. Um, so we know that the industry that we hear, we are in a very competitive uh, environment. Uh, so that's why international cooperation and cooperation at the global level are key because we need to work together not to have just competition, but also you know, to foster the key success stories and also uh, the, the key factors which are needed for decarbonizing the industry. So that's why we launched at COP26, together with Australia, um, the Net Zero Industries mission in the context of mission innovation. Uh, and we just um, are now implementing it. So we want to showcase demonstrators for Net Zero industry worldwide. The mission currently convenes nine countries. Um, with a high share of how to abate industrial sectors. Um, it also delivers on strengthening the public and private cooperation. Um, we try to promote knowledge sharing um, and also establishing, as I already said, research cooperation and demonstration plans. Um, and we're really happy that Lead IT is a cooperation partner of Mission Innovation. Uh, as Austria, we are also going to launch a bilateral research uh, call. No, I have to say Austria and Australia, because we're going to do it uh, jointly. Uh, we will launch uh, a call for re research programs, which is worth 14 million, um, let me say, uh, euros, not dollars. Uh, and we hope that we will have a lot of interest in this call, and it would really be great if... Uh, if Lead IT, if uh, as a corporation partner, you could communicate this call and then, you know, really spread the message that there is money available, as you just said, yeah. uh, about the matchmaking uh, and that the way we can really then find uh, good projects and um, report back next right. year, maybe yeah. what we've done. Great. And just and finally, just any, any advice for Lead IT on how to make sure that... Um, that, that technology diffusion happens fast? Ooh, uh, technology diffusion yeah. uh, happening fast. I think what you really need, uh, I look at Johanna, Johanna knows that I've been dealing with technology here in the negotiations for, for quite a long time. 
Um, no, what is really important that you have regulatory frameworks established at the national level, that you have national systems of innovation which are working. Yeah. And this helps a lot then to attract money, to yeah. attract uh, investments, and then also to speed up the implementation and yeah. speed uh, up uh, uh, the technology. And actually, I know that that's um, from, the, from the breakthrough agenda, some of the very specific action, international collaboration action items are around things like it, it, collaborating on international standards for green hydrogen and green steel, for example. That, 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 otherwise, you can this, end up with this fragmented market, which makes it very hard. So, great, good, good example. Ab yeah. Absolutely, um, and w and we will need work on that when it comes to green hydrogen, to yeah. CCUS, to electrification, and um, there's a lot of work to do. Yeah, great, thank you, um, Mathilde. Um, uh, over to you now. I, th I think that. Um, I really want to get into this issue of domestic resource mobilization because I understand that the OECD's clean energy finance and investment mobilization has been talking about how to strengthen enabling conditions. And I wonder if you could say, um, one of the things I really like about these collaborations is it, it's, it's clearly not a one-way flow of collaboration, right? Everybody, we're all learning together. But, we, but one thing we do know is, is and again, as Stern and Songway point out, is that if we don't get the enabling conditions right in emerging economies, then, then finance won't flow. So it's really interesting that you've been digging deep into this. Tell us a little bit about what, what do we need to do to make those enabling conditions right to, to attract investment? Uh, I think, I mean, clearly we need to have a multi-stakeholder approach to make sure that uh, you, you put all the, <laughs> all the brains together or all the competencies together. And for example, uh, to have a stronger governance approach, you know, for all these... Uh, uh, question of attractive finance, not only from domestic finance, but as, as it was said, international, private, public, etc. And you need to have all the, the actors around the table. You need to have uh, the national governments and the subnational governments having a clear vision, clear strategies uh, to kind of set the direction. You need to have, of course, the, the, the operational competencies and uh, knowledge of the industrial actors around the table, uh, because at the end of the day, they know what is needed, they know how to do it. Uh, and you need to have you know, the, the, the DFIs around the table to provide, be able to provide concession finance, and then the, the donors that can provide direct support to the first movers somehow. So this, this aspect of uh, knowledge sharing uh, is, is, is quite important. And then, of course, when we speak about uh, enabling conditions, uh, you have all the, the regulatory framework that needs to be in pla place in terms of taxonomies, definitions of uh, green instruments, etc. cetera. And um, I, this, this is a leading question because of a hypothesis I have that um, we're getting better at international collaboration, government to government, and including, uh, including donors and MDBs. Mm -hmm. but, but I have a sense, so I want to test, test this with you with what you've been doing, that we're often quite late to bring the private sector actors in, both the industrialists and the providers of finance. Um, I just wondered, if, I just wondered if, that, if that resonates with you, and if so, what have you seen is, is, is good practice to maybe bring, bring all of the kind of problem-solving partners together in, in, a, in a timely manner? Yeah, I think it's, it's quite clear now. You know that we are kind of tracking the climate finance, and... Uh, uh, first, it's not advancing <laughs> quick enough, but in, in, in addition to this kind of general uh, evaluation, clearly what we are missing is a strong mobilization of private finance. So that's uh, what we have been focusing on this year. We have published a specific report on how to mobilize pri uh, private sector better, and uh, there are at least uh, two key things. It's first, again, the enabling environment, and, and, and here, I mean, uh, we are working hard, including on all the standards. It was mentioned, you know, convergent standards in the financial sector per se, you know, because the, where we are currently in the financial sector, it's a kind of a state of confusion in terms of uh, uh, standards, definition, taxonomies. Uh, if you look at also, uh, no, in terms of disclosure, everything is voluntary. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of different standards, and, and, and uh, there is a big work to do in terms of harmonization, convergence of standards for the disclosure, etc. So that's, 
and I think we are at the time where we need regulation now. <laughs> yeah. For the financial sector, we need regulation, uh, at least on disclosure, which will trigger more action by yeah. all the actors, and, and clear action and action that you can monitor. Because at, at, at the current stage, it's very difficult to figure out uh, if you take one big financial institution, whether or not the, the, the money, the flows, is allocated to the right places. So you need really a big um, step yeah. in terms of regulation, in terms of disclosure, and in terms of harmonization of standards. Right. So we need the standards, but they need to be regulated, and they need to converge yeah. internationally, so there's not confusion. Wonderful. I know, I know we're running out of time. I just want just, just one quick thought from each of you about what the main thing, and, 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 and whoever goes last is going to have to not repeat the other three. I want four <laughs> ideas. Um, what the main thing we should focus on to improve the flow of finance to, to green technology, especially, so I, I, so I don't want to talk about renewable energy and um, electric vehicles, which, yeah. are, which are way up the S-curve, but these, where we're much more at the first of a kind stage, like green steel, green cement, um, green hydrogen, uh, sustainable fuel. What, 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 what's the, let's have four ideas, quick ideas about what needs to happen to see the flow of finance for those very, the first of a kind or first N of a kind um, in, in the technologies that we, I, mean, I think this point that 70% of the buildings in India are yet to be built, that again, we really need to be decarbonizing steel and cement in the countries where it's going to be deployed quickly. So ideas about unlocking finance. Um, same order, same order as we went the first time around. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, I think, uh, you know, as I mentioned, finance is going to be the key for the transition that is required. And in order to be able to attract that kind of financing, it is very important to de-risk the investments that are happening into the space. Uh, we need to... Uh, have uh, mechanisms for viability gap funding because uh, you know i mean till the time the investments become profitable on their own the viability gap funding is the key and it can come from any sources including the government uh, uh, or or the private so if you ask me one it should, it should be viability gap funding and i'll not say more no, because, because I'm <laughs> exhaust yeah. thank Great. you that, thank, thank you. you yes Robert. Well, I mean, to me, it's about engaging, equipping, and empowering the actors. And also then, of course, early on, take on the financial actors, those that have the capital. Right. But you need to get the local perspective, the local communities, the local actors on board, because it's on the local, uh, it, it happens. Great, very practical, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so very brief. Clear regulatory frameworks, clear legislation at the national and regional, regional level um, because we need investment security uh, and also clear political visions and targets so that everybody knows in which direction uh, we want to go. And then, of course, you need support and financing um, well, I think you've from had the public I think sector, you've had but also... <laughs> That's three now. Careful. Sorry. <laughs> I, I leave so, the rest for you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay. If we have all of that already, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think what would be useful is to have uh, knowledge sharing platforms uh, so that you can uh, increase the rep uh, replicability right. of, you know, the financing in the project. And you can also, you know, work on scaling up yeah. investment and in the instruments and also having matchmaking platforms yeah. uh, to make like, for example, the, what we saw in the video, make them <laughs> meet, you know? Yeah. And that's what we are trying to do, including in a climate club that was launched yeah. this week. Wonderful. Um, uh, I love the very specific, very practical, and all of those ideas, you can immediately see being, being imp they're all, they're, none of them are simple, but they're all very clear, re really great. And I think if we, and if we had all of those, then we'd be going much, much faster. Um, uh, Sadly, that brings us to, to, to the end of the panel. Re re really, really rich and varied perspectives, but all um, really focus on this opportunity we have to accelerate the just and equitable industry transition through these kind of um, rich collaborations. So thank you. Let's give a hand of applause to the panel.
closing thoughts. Um, as I said, I thought that this, this observation that so much of the investment is going to happen in, the, um, in emerging markets and that we need to get decarbonisation right all over the world at the same pace um, is, is um, really thought-provoking. Um, that, that these collaborations really um, take life when they're anchored around real projects. Right, so we're not, yeah, yeah, we, need, we need the frameworks and the regulations, but it's actually getting transactions done, getting factories built, getting technology implemented that, that really helps us. Um, that um, there's a competitiveness element and a collaboration element, and getting that competition, collaboration, balance, balance right is really important um, because we, we, we do want people to compete, but we also have to collaborate. So finding, finding the, the, the kind of sweet spot between those two is um, re really valuable. There is a lot of work to be done on labelling conditions, whether it's um, setting the standards, making sure they're in regulation, and making sure they're converging internationally. And then I love these, just these ideas at the end that um, it needs to be about deals, um, that we um, need to be engaging with the right stakeholders early enough not having one group of stakeholders defining structure and then, then hoping that everyone else will be enthusiastic. We know that, that, that complicated things don't work that way. Um, that we do need those clear frameworks and the political support. Um, and that we need knowledge, knowledge sharing. What I, I'm noticing this more and more that there's often the narrative is dominated by how bad things are or how little we've done. And everywhere, all around the world, there's amazing innovation happening. And we do need to do a better job of explaining what's working. because. That sense of excitement and even a bit of FOMO that stuff is happening, capital is mobilizing, competitors are competing, um, is one of the things that can attract a lot more attention um, than just focusing on the problems. So thank you so much for the panel. Thank you to the Swedish team for, for, for hosting us here. Um, and good luck with whatever you're doing for the rest of the COP. Thank you.